guys how's it going it's al the week nine recap video is here thank you for coming over to the fantasy football channel if you're new here drop a sub on the channel and ring the notifications bell five videos come out on this channel aside from my main channel where all the dfs content lives all week long so this is the video if you're new to the channel where I go over everything that happened in week nine. I go over my Best Buys article. I look at my cash game lineup, my 150 lineups in the Millionaire Maker. We go over who finished in the top 10 in the uh, Smith Gang Listener League. I talk about the cage match, all the results of everything that we did from last week. This is the autopsy. Where I was right, did we get lucky? Where I was wrong, did we get unlucky? Or was it bad process and something that we can improve moving forward? So thank you guys for being here. Drop a like on the video and let's go. He's a legend. mizzle.tv slash links that's how you're going to find your way into basically everything here's the link to the listener league here's how you join our discard if you wanted to take part in the no kid hungry fundraiser where we are trying to raise a hundred thousand dollars collectively fifty thousand dollars from the community and fifty thousand dollars from me with a trigger every single ten thousand raise the next match is at fifty thousand dollars we're just over forty one thousand right now best buys it comes out every thursday uh, and everything else that I do is all right here in the link tree, smizzle.tv slash links. The only way to get into that listen league is it's not a lobby game. So you're going to have to find it right here. That's where you get there every single week. So go to smizzle.tv slash links and like click everything that's here. Just go do the clicks. Let's take a look at Best Buys. Not, not the title that I envisioned and like, it's not what I said to do, but you know, titles, I don't write the titles. I write the article. Here's what we got for the article. Started with Josh Allen. 26.8 DraftKings points, just fine. Even though he did not have a good day throwing the ball. 18 of 34, 205, zero touchdowns with two interceptions. Ran it nine times for 86 yards uh, and two touchdowns because the running quarterbacks are a cheat coach. Which brings us to Justin Fields, who was another absolute smash. Threw the ball 17 uh, of 28. 123 but efficiency not volume is what leads to quarterback scoring he had three touchdowns on the day he also ran for a regular season nfl record 178 yards and a touchdown end of the day with 45.72 DraftKings points ridiculous so he already was like a great floor play and was very underpriced versus uh what a running quarterback can do in fantasy football his price has been greatly elevated moving forward after that outburst and like a couple of 20 plus point days he also had a game against minnesota where he had like 17 five weeks ago but he had a 60 yard touchdown run called back at the end of that game that would have made it like a 30 point fantasy day so the field like uh, the floor with justin fields is just tremendous however they have now made it a lot more dangerous by pricing him up to i think like the mid 6k range which is where any running back should be 5300 was kind of egregious pricing by DraftKings. Justin Herbert, uh, I had him in here. He did not do great. 30 of 43, completed a lot of passes, but there's just no talent in the outside. I was banking on Keenan Allen coming back. He was not back, uh, so that kind of sucked. I didn't like that, and it kind of is what it is. However, we were on Austin Eckler, 25.1 DraftKings points. That's a smash. He, he's amazing, right? You know you're going to get a ridiculous floor with him every single week because he got nine targets again. He's, he's clearly on pace to break that single season running back receptions record. 14 carries for 47 yards, scored another touchdown. Seven of nine for 24, scored another touchdown through the air. He's, he's a fantasy monster. Joe Mixon had a fantastic day. Tales that I did not say to play Joe Mixon uh, in week nine are greatly exaggerated as I basically put him in most of the pieces of content that I did last week, including Best Buy's. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say that he was a smash. 22 carries for 153 and four touchdowns on the ground. He also worked in five targets where he caught four of them for 58 and another touchdown. 58.1 DraftKings points is absurd, and I hope that you had him. Travis, he did not lead you to victory. There were other places you had to go, but like he made it a lot easier. <clears throat> if you had him in cash games, you basically won everything. If you had him, you probably also had Justin Fields. So like they had like 100 points together from two spots. Travis Etienne Jr., Carried it 28 times, 109 yards on the ground with two touchdowns, uh, bad per carry average. Why are they treating him the way that the Atlanta Falcons treated Cordero Patterson at the end of last year? Two catches, two targets. 29.6 DraftKings points is good. He was clearly the cash game play. Uh, you could have picked three of these guys out of the four that we wrote up, and they were just fine for cash any way that you wanted to go. But like, I tweeted out on like Friday, can we please normalize getting Travis Etienne Jr. five plus targets a game absolutely every game? Can we just do that? 
Can we please just give him five targets a game? I, it would be much better. It would be better for the Jacksonville offense. It would be better for Travis Etienne Jr. It would be better for Trevor Lawrence. It would be better for all of us in fantasy. Throw him, throw him the ball. More would be fantastic. More consistently. But they're not doing it. So he's going to be risky every single week as long as he's getting like two, three targets a game. Just gross. Ramondre Stevenson, like he's getting there, but like it's 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 dangerous at this point. Ramondre Stevenson, another smash, right? He had a, not, not like a full-on smash. Like we got unlucky that he did not go a little bit better in this spot. 15 carries for 60 yards, no touchdowns. Caught three balls, but on seven targets. This is a guy who's been catching 90 to 95% of the targets that have been headed his way. And he had a game where he caught less than... You know, he should have had five, six catches in this spot for another 25 more yards. Would have put him in another game where he scored over 20 points. Uh, I stand by this price being egregious for somebody like Ramondre. He needs to be over 7K with the amount of pass game work that he's getting uh, and as talented as he is. So 16 points paid off. Not a smash, but like it definitely paid off. Tyreek Hill, smash. Scored a touchdown this week, which he hasn't really done in a lot of weeks, but seven, tar seven catches on eight targets, 143 and a touch, 30.3 DraftKings points, smash. Stephon Diggs. 10 targets, only caught five of them, 93 yards, no touchdowns. They did not go to him in the second half of this game pretty much at all. 14.3 points after really getting after it early in the game. Unfortunate that he did not get there in that spot. Only 14.3 points. Hopefully you went Tyreek over Steph Diggs, at least in your allocations. Chris Godwin, he keeps getting there in like the ugliest way possible. 10.6 fantasy points. If you played him in cash, like he's fine, but like he's never going to be thrilling with the way that he's being utilized. Seven catches on 10 targets for 36 yards. That's just gross. So like, the, I think I said that in this thing, right? Like he's got a really good floor, but like not a, not a great ceiling, right? He's set up to pay off the salary. He didn't quite get there this week. But like he didn't hurt you like some of the other guys did. I'm on Ross St. Brown, a little bit more expensive. Four catches on nine targets for 55 yards and no touchdowns. At least the targets are back. 9.5 points, not enough. DJ Moore, I'll take an L on DJ Moore here at 5,800. Two catches on six targets for 24 yards, no touchdowns, 4.4 DraftKings points. He's a miss. Hayden Hurst, like five catches, five targets, 35 yards, 8.5 points. Meh. Evan Ingram, that's a miss there. One catch on two targets for eight yards, only 1.8. He kind of sucked. Tampa Bay Buccaneers defense, eight points. Panthers uh, had negative two, but if you played him in cash, it really didn't matter because you had all the other pieces around him. My cash game lineup, I started with the core that we had talked about with Etienne Jr., Stevenson, uh, and St. Brown. I paid up to get Eckler, who did fine. My mistake in this cash game lineup was getting up to Moore and not playing Palmer. Like Palmer, I just don't like Palmer. I know that he was in a good spot because everybody else was out last week. He's just not been able to get open. I did have fields in this lineup. I finished right after this ridiculously long train of lineups uh, who all split 15th place. So all these lineups finished in the money and lost money, right? So all these dudes did not make money in that one. And I finished and got nothing. You see CSU ran by right below my team here. Uh, Buccaneers defense paid it for them. Tunyon should have come down to uh, Moreau in that spot. Should have come down here and come up off of Raymond uh, as well. And I would have easily cashed uh, in that one. Because if you had fields at 53%, everybody, this is high stakes. 100% on ETN, 100% on Stevenson. No leverage to be had. I had Eckler in this spot. The top scoring cash game lineup in this one. If you wanted to see where that looked like, Fields, Etn, Stevenson went for Hopkins, Brown. Also had more. Ingram, Mixon was the differentiator at 36.7% there. Taking a look at the Millionaire Maker. I did not profit in the Millionaire Maker this week, even though I had 40% Joe Mixon and the field had 12.2. So that kind of sucked. Uh, we talked on the Friday show about how I thought you could go with naked fields or like allow it to stack with them if you wanted to, but you didn't have to. So like I had a lot of fields doubles. I came in the highest lineup I had at 219 with 455 points. Fields, Eckler, Mixon, Christian Kirk, uh, Moreau, Raymond, Lazard, who was in five under five. We had three players in five under five who smashed this week, which was really cool and really fun to see. Uh, I needed to have more Terrace Marshall. He was a really good play. Brock Wright did not do well, but basically all the top lineups are going to have Mixon and probably have Fields in them because it was the easiest path uh, to getting up the standing sheet. So my favorite lineup this week was probably Fields uh, and then the Hill doubles with Waddle, who was also in the five under five. And you didn't even have to bring back those guys because we had talked about the same thing. Not very much volume at all, but Fields threw for three touchdowns. So it was a path to kind of getting there. Taking a look at the... 
Cage match against Big T44 from Run Pure Sports. I won this one, 147.02 to 108. My fields, uh, fields, Etienne, Stevenson, Tyreek basically just kind of won the day. He had Ken Walker the third, who once again did very, very well, and also had more targets than Travis Etienne. Like that's it's it's just bothering me. Josh Allen did not pay off. He had Palmer, who did pay off. This is that 21 points that I said that Palmer had before. So let's take a look at uh, Rainmakers. This is sorted by the last 30 days. This is not what I won this week. This is over the last 30 days. I've won like $31,000 in Rainmakers for tournaments that have absolutely no entry fees. Rainmakers has been awesome. I've been a big fan of, of what has been transpiring in Rainmakers. This was my lineups this week. I won like three, four, no, uh, 5K this week in Rainmakers. So I won 1,000 here, 100 there. 2000 on the on this game unfortunately i went with kelsey over mahomes because i want to differentiate there's a few people that were going to have mahomes in the captain spot that was this was the winning lineup with these two spots flipped congratulations to cal spears who took down the rainmaker prize there won 300 with this justin fields lineup now i have to debate whether i sell this fields because i bought it for like 900 bucks and i could probably sell it for like 2k now or 2500 so i should probably sell that card 400 with this to a lineup as you can see most of my lineups are based around that miami double stack that's how i've curated my collection at this point this actually won some money so good for this finally tom brady stacks doing something uh and that's about it that's basically all that i was able to accomplish this week in rainmakers so let's take a look at the listener league congratulations to pool holes junkie who took it down with 248.42 had justin fields talked about that tyree kill and waddle stack Brought it back with Mooney, had Mitchell at the tight end spot for the bare minimum, Ken Walker, Mixon, Etienne, Seahawks defense for eight points. Congratulations to him on taking that down. We're going to see a lot of fields and Mixon here, guys, so like mentally prepare yourselves for that. Congratulations to Lidgeman, Jay Show, Clutch Player 24. Ooh, not a fields lineup. Very interesting. What do we have here? We have Tags, we have Waddle, No Hill, but did have Devontae Adams. Interesting. Had Cordero Patterson, who was one of my favorite tournament play specifically over on FanDuel wasn't really sure he was going to get 100% of the usage and there were so many plays in that range uh, another fields lineup for Papa 64 Mr. Winstead congratulations to you Figman 103 Danny Jacks Johnny the Jabes and NYC Freeze rounds out the top 10 so thank you guys for watching look out for another video right there he's a legend